Hello, this is Aloisa with Math Leopard. Today, we're going to show how to plot cardioids and limassons by referencing rectangular coordinates. To begin, cardioids are of the form r is equals to a plus or minus a cosine theta, which is oriented with respect to the x-axis, because x is equals to cosine of theta on the unit circle, or r is equals to a plus or minus a sine theta, which is oriented with respect to the y-axis, as y is equals to sine theta on the unit circle. To show the relationship of the orientations with respect to their corresponding axes, we proceed as follows. Let's consider r is equals to 2 plus 2 cosine theta. As stated above, I would like to plot this polar curve by first analyzing its rectangular graph. To that end, I first plot the graph of r is equals to cosine theta, wherein theta is my independent variable. This is our standard graph for cosine of theta. Now let's plot the graph of 2 cosine theta, which stretches the graph vertically by a factor of 2. Finally, we add 2 to the previous graph, which translates the graph vertically up 2 units. This is the rectangular representation of our cardioid. Let's see how this helps us plot our polar graph. To begin, we see that at 0 radians, the length of our radius is 4. Hence, we place a dot, seen here in pink, four units from the pole along the positive x-axis. Within the first quadrant, we see that the radius reduces from a length of four to a length of two, hence the location of the orange dot along the positive y-axis, or along the line theta is equals to pi over two. In quadrant two, we note that our radius reduces from two to zero, hence we end up at the pole, seen here as the light blue dot, which is along the negative axis, or theta equals to pi. As this this is a symmetric graph, we see that our radius is increasing from 0 to 2 in the third quadrant, being a mirror image to that in the second. And finally, the fourth quadrant sees our radius increase from 2 to 4, aligning with where we began in a smooth curve that cycles infinitely forward and back. As we can see, the larger portion of this quote, heart-shaped graph is indeed oriented with respect to the positive x-axis. Next, let's consider the graph of r is equals to 3 minus 3 cosine theta. The major difference in this equation from the last is that the coefficient of cosine is negative. So how will this affect the orientation? As before, we want to first plot the graph in the rectangular coordinate system. To that end, we begin the, with the graph of cosine theta. We then multiply by a negative 3, which stretches the graph vertically by a factor of 3, then reflects it about the x-axis. Finally, we add 3, translating the graph vertically by 3 units upwards. To plot this in polar coordinates, we begin as before. We note that at 0 radians, our radius is 0, yet increases to a length of 3 within the first quadrant. Next, the radius increases from 3 to 6 in the second quadrant, meaning we have a radius of 6 in the direction of theta equals to pi radians. As we saw before, this cardioid is symmetric with respect to the horizontal axis. Hence, in quadrant 3, seen here in light blue, we decrease from a radius of 6 to a radius of 3. Finally, in quadrant 4, we decrease from a length of 2 to 0, ending at the pole where we began, having come full circle. Note how this graph is oriented along the negative x-axis, in accordance to the negative coefficient of cosine. Next, let's consider the graph of cardioids involving the sine function. To begin, consider r is equals to 1 plus sine theta. I claim this graph will be oriented along the positive y-axis, given the trend for cosine along the x-axis. Beginning with the graph of sine theta, the only augmentation to the graph is adding 1, thereby translating the graph vertically 1 unit. Represented in polar form, we begin at 0 radians with a radius of 1. Then, within the first quadrant, we increase to a radius of 2 at theta equals to pi over 2. In quadrant 2, we decrease from a radius of 2 to a radius of 1 at theta equals to pi. Then in quadrant 3, we decrease to a radius of 0 by theta equals to 3 pi over 2. Finally, in quadrant 4, we increase the length of the radius back to 2, where we began. Note how this cardioid is indeed oriented with its larger side along the positive y-axis. The last example for cardioids will be r is equals to 4 minus 4 sine theta. Once again, I claim this will be oriented along the negative y-axis, given the coefficient of sine is negative. So let's begin. The graph of sine theta is as follows. Multiplying by negative 4 stretches the graph by a factor of 4 and reflects it about the x-axis. Finally, adding 4 translates the graph vertically up 4 units. 
To see how this translates to polar form, let's begin with the first quadrant in which our radius begins at a length of 4, then decreases to 0 by theta is equals to pi over 2. We see in quadrant 2, we increase to a radius of length 4 at theta equals to pi. Then in quadrant 3, our radius increases from a length of 4 to a length of 8 units in the direction of theta equals to 3 pi over 2. Finally, in quadrant 4, we decrease from a radius of length 8 to a radius of length 4, right back where we began. Notice how this cardioid is indeed oriented along the negative y-axis. Moving on, we know that limassons are of the form r is equals to a plus or minus b cosine theta, which will of course be oriented along the x-axis, as x is equals to cosine theta on the unit circle, or r is equals to a plus or minus b sine theta, oriented along the y-axis, as y is equivalent to sine of theta on the unit circle. To begin, let's consider the function r is equals to 2 plus 3 sine theta. Once again, I'd like to plot this in the rectangular coordinate system prior to plotting its polar form. We first plot r is equals to sine of theta, then multiply through by 3, stretching the graph vertically by a factor of 3. Then finally adding 2, which translates the graph up 2 units vertically. How will this graph differ from that of the cardioid in polar form? To begin, the radius at theta equals to 0 is 2, and increases to a length of 5 at theta is equals to pi over 2. In quadrant 2, we increase to a radius of length 2 at theta equals to pi. However, in quadrant 3, we see that on the rectangular graph, the radius dips beneath the x-axis before coming to rest at a value of negative 1. The negative radius in the direction of 3 pi over 2 points in the direction of pi over 2. Hence, we begin the transversal of our fourth quadrant within the second quadrant on our polar graph, emerging back into the fourth quadrant as our radius passes through 0 and once again becomes positive. As we can see, this graph is oriented along the positive y-axis, but as opposed to a cardioid, this type of limason has an inner loop. Considering the graph of r is equals to 1 minus 2 cosine theta, it's safe to assume by now that our graph will have a negative x-axis orientation. But let's go through the process to show this. Plotting in rectangular form, we first note the graph of cosine theta, which when multiplied through by a negative 2 stretches the graph vertically by a factor of 2 and then reflects it about the x-axis. Finally, we add 1, translating the graph vertically by 1 unit. Proceeding to polar form, we begin at theta equals to 0 with a radial length that's negative. Hence, we begin along theta equals to pi with a radius of length 1, seen here in pink. Sweeping through the first quadrant on the graph at right, we see that once our radius passes through 0 at theta equals to pi over 3, we then enter the first quadrant of our polar graph, finishing at a length of 1 along the line theta equals to pi over 2. In quadrant 2, we increase from a radial length of 1 to 3 at theta equals 2 pi. In quadrant 3, our radius decreases in length to a value of 1, and finally in quadrant 4, we once again cross over to a negative value for our radius, crossing into the second quadrant once again at theta equals to 5 pi over 3. We see that this limason is indeed oriented along the negative x-axis, as is its inner loop. Note that in the previous two graphs, the constant coefficient was smaller than that of the trigonometric coefficient. If we reverse that format, how will our limassons differ? Let's consider the graph of r is equals to 3 minus sine theta, in which the constant coefficient exceeds an absolute value, that for sine. Plotting this in rectangular coordinates, we begin with the graph of sine theta, then multiplying through by negative 1 reflects the graph across the x-axis. Finally, adding 3 will translate the graph vertically upwards 3 units. We know already that the majority of this graph will be oriented along the negative y-axis, but let's see how. Beginning with a radius of 3 at theta equals to 0, we decrease to a radius of 2 at theta equals to pi over 2. However, we then increase back to a radius of length 3 at theta equals to pi, and in quadrant 3 we increase to a radius of 4 at theta equals to 3 pi over 2. Finally, in quadrant 4, we decrease back to a radius of 3 where we began. Note that this type of limason is more akin to a flattened circle than a cardioid. Our last example will be the limason r is equals to 4 plus 3 cosine theta, which from the equation we know will orient along the positive x-axis. Beginning with the graph of cosine, we then multiply through by 3, stretching the graph vertically by a factor of 3. Then finally we add 4, shifting the graph vertically 4 units upwards. 
To see how this plots in polar form, we begin with the radius of 7 at theta equals to 0, then decrease to length 4 by theta equals to pi over 2. In quadrant 2, our radius further decreases to a length of 1 at theta equals to pi, but in quadrant 3, increases back to a radius of 4 at theta equals 3 pi over 2. Finally, in quadrant 4, our radius increases to a length of 7, back to where we began completing the cycle. Note how this graph is indeed oriented on the positive x-axis, and how this type of limason is more akin to a dimpled circle in shape. Thanks for playing, and I'll see you next time.